Coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was so said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Be not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. You will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth <coughs> month for her, who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cora and Mary's house under the, their cathedral you know, so we can celebrate not only this beautiful statue of, of Mary, because this is the traveling Madonna. That's very unique. People have a lot of statues, but this is a traveling Madonna. It started immediately, and it's been in every Catholic church in the world, and every seminary I know, because everybody had this devotion to it by the uh, Fatima. And it's because, of course, the Pope, and especially, Bruce, especially John Paul II, but it's a very important feast because of celebration, because it's uniquely ours uh, in the sense that we in America have really caught the, the, the sense of, of this feasting. You know, there's one thing in America, we have a beautiful devotion to Our Lady because of our heritage, as I know you do, <coughs> as uh, people from uh, from the, from the uh, Puerto Rico, from the, uh, what do you call it? The Philippines. 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 Yeah. You have that. I was Italian. We had that. You know, in New York, they have a lot of people that, a lot of young people that have a devotion to Mary. I heard a story. A young man was shining shoes. You know, I saw the young kids that were part of the university, got into the university, they took them shining shoes. And I guess, especially in a big uh, railroad station, man, men would stop off and they would shine the shoes and give them money and a tip. And then they raised money, brought it home, and then they got uh, their tuition money. Well, this one kid, he was shining the sky, the trees, pre salt, really beautiful suit, you know. And uh, he saw the kids shining, and he saw the miraculous medal, the little of Mary, hanging, and it was swinging back and forth. He said, What's that piece of tin around your neck? He said, That piece of tin, sir, is Mary, the mother of God. He says, Who's she? He says, Well, I can't tell you very much, but I can tell you. She didn't have a son like you. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, Mary has left a impression on a lot of people. A lot of people. And, the, and that's why we have the first reading where it speaks about the woman, about Eve conceiving children. And then, of course, eventually that sh uh, children will be conceived by mothers. And these children will become saved children because of the holiness of Mary. And Mary comes to us really through the holiness of her son who is perfect and gives us his holiness, but it's also to the people that go for us, our mothers. And that's what Mary gave to Jesus. You have to understand, and this is very beautiful, because I always watch the deacon pour the drop of water in that wine. That is so important a thing in, in our church, and we keep it to it, say, I say it loud so people can hear it. You know, it is God who chose to 
the carbon of, of, of the human, that drop of water maintains the mixture of divinity and humanity. Because Jesus joined our humanity, and because he joined our humanity, we get a share in his divinity. That's why the drop of water, the wine of water is always in the mass at that moment by the deacon, and it, or by the priest if there's no deacon. Because it symbolizes that we gather from Mary, through Jesus, the holiness that we get, that we speak about in the first reading. And of course, you realize that mothers, Mary as a mother, they are, Jesus was the child of Mary as a human person. He was the child of God, because his father was really the Holy Spirit. Without the father, through the Holy Spirit, she conceived him. Not, a, not any action that didn't have a biological being. But because of that, but the biology of her body, she dropped over Mary. She, can you imagine how beautiful he must have looked if she was beautiful? And he got all the traits of Mary. That's why we have all these sayings in scripture of Jesus. It comes through Mary, his mother. And mothers are so important today, especially nowadays, when they're trying to, to separate a mother from a child. The hardest thing we have happening to us today in this country is that abortion problem. Mm -hmm. And they're pushing it very hard yeah. because mm -hmm. there's nothing else they can really get people to believe in because they're very, very uh, uncertain about the, about, about the money and about the retirement. But if they can get them to be their anti-Mary, anti-life, anti they hope they hope win it. We know it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Mary would never allow it. But in the end, that the sense, it tells us how the beauty of being a child of a woman. And I was telling a priest this morning, we were talking about ordain, ordination. I got ordained 67 years ago in Rome. And uh, I remember my day, I couldn't, my mother and father were over here in the United States. I was sent to Rome to study to be a priest. And when it came time for the ordination, they would not let me come home to America to get ordained. And every boy at the, at the seminary I was at did go to their country. We have priests from all over the country. We have also a lot of priests in the Philippines. They didn't get a chance to go home. But at that time, I was there. There were no Philippines at that time. But I couldn't come home. And of course, I had to tell my mother. I said, you know, I can't come home. you got to come here for the ordination. She said, no, she says, I can't come because your father had a stroke and I got to be with him. He comes first in my mind. I tried to tell that to some kids who couldn't believe it. I said, remember, once you get married, you come first in the mother of marriage. Even though all the kids you have, they go when you're together for life. And my mother always realized that. So eventually, you know, uh, I had to stay in Rome. I got ordained, got a priest. I was a priest for one year. And then they allowed me to come home to visit to have a first place. When I stopped in New York, I, by the, it was that time we didn't fly in Rome, but it was just six years ago, we took a boat home, a ship. When I got off the ship and went down the gangplank, I could see my brother and my sister-in-law and my little mother. And I walked down the gangplank and I saw my mother. Before she hugged me, she fell on her knees and kissed my hands. Mm -hmm. She grabbed my hands and kissed them. Because she saw in me the fact that I had been ordained a priest mm -hmm. and something higher touched me mm -hmm. than just her womb, you know. And of course, that so impressed me, the fact that when this whole family minute, when I hadn't seen her for five years, she first thinks of the love that I received by my ordination. That's faith. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. faith. You know, and I think that's the most important thing that you should give to your children, is this sense of faith. That's when you have things like this. Some people see this room. They know something holy happens here. I mean, all these is a cross on top. It could be a cathedral. Because all the statues of what we believe in, the faith that we profess, in so many ways is expressed in all the pictures here, and all the statues here. The faith, the hope, the treasury that we have as a faith it's all encompassed in everything that hangs in this room. And we always see it in Mary. And so one of the things you can do in this coming year, and I think this is most important, to pray to Mary to help for those to 
tell them to maintain themselves, to help with those in the world. But these are holy creatures. They are made by God in the image of God. To destroy them, really, is just murder. And you know, that's why we should pray God to first forgive our sins, that we, as loving Americans, can do something horrible like this, that we, is a sin that really blesses our nation. We never had this in our country before. Some countries will never have it. But we ought to realize that life is always precious. And the life we have is a life that God gave through Mary to a human being. And because of that, that makes everything.